first and foremost, my wife and I want to thank all you guys for coming. Because each and every single person that's here has walked through life with us in some way or another. And it was important to us that you're here not just to support us, but to mourn with us. And so, I wanted to start off by explaining why my wife and I are mourning. We mourn because our loss of sleep at night is not due to our daughters crying. We mourn because we lost the dreams of having time with her. We mourn because she's our child and we'll never get to see the features of her face grow from a girl to a young woman. I will mourn because I'll never get to walk her down the aisle. We mourn because we'll never get to hold her hand, braid her hair, or dress her up. We mourn because this is the last memory we get to create with her. We mourn because this is God's way of showing us love. I've always known that I needed God. I've lived a life of pursuit after Him. But I realized I was wrong for doing so. Never once did I need to pursue God to know Him. All I needed to do was be still. I never knew how much I needed God until I was waiting in the hospital. I did not want to talk, watch TV, or be on the phone. For once, I realized I wanted to do nothing but be still. It was the stillness that showed me how much more I needed God. But it does not come by the pursuit. It comes by my stillness and acceptance of Him. Matthew 5, 3. God blesses those who realize their need for Him. For the kingdom of heaven is given to them. The death of my daughter has been the worst thing that has ever happened to me. I cried so hard that the cartilage and the ribs were popping. I learned that mourning is of God, for without mourning we can never know His comfort. Matthew 5, 4 God blesses those that mourn, for they will be comforted. When Michaela was born, she did not look like what I was expecting. When I first laid eyes on her, my natural state of what's normal wanted to reject the way she looked. But a second later, God shows up with the love of a father. The way she looked no longer mattered to me. I saw her as my beloved daughter and child. I saw her through father's eyes. She's beautiful and wonderfully created. God showed me that's the same way he looks at us. No matter how grotesque our sin is, he sees us as what he created in his image. His love extends beyond our sin and wants us to know that the way I saw my daughter as beautiful and wonderfully made is the same way he views us. The hardest part in all of this, which is also the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life, which was to let go and give Michaela to the doctors. I had been holding her for close to seven hours before the hospital came to her. In my heart, I was still holding on to Michaela, being dragged behind her, never wanting to let go. Monday night, as I was laying and crying in bed, I said to God, This year, this year, I was to know your love. Where is your love in all this? And I felt the Lord say, just as you never wanted to let go of your daughter, I also never wanted to let go of any of my children. So much so that I gave my son for the salvation of others. I know I've heard this thousands of times, but now, but now I truly understand what it means not to want to let go. Over the past four years, I've lost very close friends on each of those years. I started worrying and having fear of dying. I've been consumed with fear until my daughter's passing. Now it's all different because I'm no longer cons consumed for the worst thing that could have ever happened to me happened. And I'm still standing firm and strong in the Lord. Fear has no hold because my reward is truly in heaven the love of God and my daughter. I now look forward 
with a heavenly mindset and await the days of my arrival. I fully thirst for heaven like a glass of water, but sip the idea of it like a fine wine. Michaela, I remember that before there was any idea that your mother was pregnant, God told me you were in her womb. When I told Grandpa Ken about you, he started crying and praising God for you. When I told Nana Peggy, she did not want to believe me until she talked to Karina. When I told Grandpa and Grandma Blaze, they were so excited for you to come. Your first gift came from Grandma Blaze at Christmas. Your Aunt Christy, Christy stayed with us the entire time while we were at the hospital. Aunt Christy provided so much support and love for us, which also showed us how much she loves you. Michaela, thank you for being a part of my life, for allowing God to use you to show me his love and grace in ways I could have never known without you. I'm eagerly awaiting to dance with you on streets of gold. I look forward to seeing your beautiful smile and to get to know your heart. You brought so much joy to our lives in the in our lives in the few short months that you were here. Your mother and I look forward to seeing you fully restored in all of God's goodness and love. But until that day when we get to see you again, know that Daddy and Mommy loves you and we are eagerly awaiting to be with you. You know, uh, when I got the call from Roger <clears throat> Tell me about what happened to you guys. I had just come from being with my oldest daughter who lost her husband four months ago in Norman and was going through a, uh, another wave of grieving. So when I got the call, I uh, was very upset um, and uh, community, we're all community here. We're all family and uh, love God. and. Uh, this touches all of us in some way, shape, or form. And so I wanted to shape a few words out of my heart about what some of us may be facing today in our hearts. Things like this can go uh, really well or they can go really bad. Um, and so let's, uh, let's focus a little bit uh, on some thoughts and words about loss and how we process it. The fact is, we were never meant to die. We're created eternal beings, and we're made and designed for relationship. That's why today is so difficult. We've been made in the Lord's image, and in this way we're like Him. It's like Evan was talking about how the Lord felt, and how He could identify with Evan and Evan could identify with him now as a result of this in the beginning God wanted more family and created a man and a woman wanted us to have children wanted us to experience I believe what he experiences concerning us and this is central to God's heart family children and deep long-lasting, eternal relationships. And uh, then came the fall of man, the choice that we made and the disconnect. And then we get a little bit of a glimpse into the heart of God. In Genesis 6, God's viewing the result of the rebellion of man, and it said it broke his heart. One version says his heart was full of pain. Imagine that just a minute about the heart of God being full of pain. And the reason I'm kind of pointing that out today is because sometimes in situations like this, just like I experienced coming home from Norman the other day, I was angry because of this kind of pain that Evan and Karina were experiencing, that my daughter's experiencing, that all of us experience at one time or another, but the Lord, He was the first one 
to experience. The first one. And so he then becomes uniquely qualified and able to help us today. So I want to encourage us in places where we might feel like we want to distance ourselves from things we don't understand, not to. I want to encourage us to uh, keep our hearts open, our minds open to the Lord. Hebrews 4 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession we don't have a high priest who can't sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Because of that, it says, therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and grace to help in a time of need. He uses the word sympathize in this scripture. In other words, he knows what this feels like. Evan was talking about how God revealed his heart to him. We saw it in Genesis, where God was the first one to experience this kind of loss that filled his heart with pain. He knows what it feels like, and because he does, he can be with us, and we can experience things in him maybe we would never ever experience relationally outside of this kind of suffering and pain. Paul talks about it when he says he had this deep desire to know him, not only the the power of his resurrection, but the fellowship that comes in his sufferings. There's something unique and special that happens there that happens nowhere else. He speaks here in Hebrews about being tempted. And so we may be tempted today to feel all kinds of things. Whatever it is that you're feeling today, right now, whether you're numb or whether you're angry or whether you're sad, or whether you're fearful, things like this sometimes can leave us feeling like life is out of control and we feel unsafe as a result of it. And we're tempted to retreat. We're tempted to make our life very small. But this is where the Lord can help us. He said He can identify with these kinds of feelings, and these kinds of pulls. And He says, but I'm right there with you and I, and I can bring you help in this. The way he does that is through the Holy Spirit. John 14, Jesus speaking, says, I'll ask the Father, and he'll give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him, but you know him, because he abides with you and will be in you. And in that scripture, in Hebrews, it says we're to hold fast our confession. This is what I was talking about, about these things happening that give us a sense of being off balance and, and like things are out of control and we can feel unsafe and want to retreat. In 1 Corinthians 15, we get a bigger perspective and it says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, death been swallowed.